Hello everyone and welcome to the episode 7 of the Mobile Networks Overview course. In the episode 6, we talked a little about uh, core network uh, CS, CS part. Mm, in this video, we want to uh, add some supplementary contents and finish the CS part maybe. But maybe in the uh, next episode, we also continue for some basic uh, scenarios like uh, basic scenarios like location update and also uh, handover and call service oh so sorry i think it's uh, very soon to finish this uh, cs core okay so let's talk about the, the cs core services as you see the most important uh, service in the CS core is voice call which we have ordinary voice call not whatsapp or something else which we have every day or USSD for example the star one two three shop SMS short message service call V18 uh, when I is talking to B and uh, C is calling A uh, if A activated the call waiting service, he will uh, hear the call waiting announcement. Call forwarding, as you know, we have uh, some types of call forwarding. Call forwarding not reachable, call forwarding unconditional. Uh, it means that if the B number is not reachable, call forward to the C number. Call forward unconditional means that in any condition, a will uh, forward when you call uh, A, it will forward on B. Okay, no, for this, sorry, when A calls B in any condition, it will forward on C. Okay, and another one call forward if busy, if B number is busy, so it will forward to C, and also. Uh, call forward if no answer okay let me choose another color i think mm, purple is great we have call conference service mm. when a and b are talking together and they want to add c to their call clip means that uh, color id presentation and this is the opposite of that restriction it's a service that if uh, the, uh, we don't want the other party to see our number we have ring back tone ring back tone you know what is ring back tone uh, when a calls to b uh, instead of uh, a simple ring he will hear uh, uh, ring that B has set for example a music or something else okay and we have something also like CRBT or MRBT multimedia ring back tone for example some multimedia shows here when you call uh, will, will, uh, you will see some multimedia here when you are calling the B party M MCA means miss call alert service when you when A calls B and B is not reachable, so uh, an SMS will send to A to inform him that the B number is not reachable. Some location-based services, uh, for example, if you go to some uh, locations that uh, some payoff or something else uh, are offering in that uh, location, you will uh, inform by flash message some uh, message on your phone or uh, sms short message service or something else okay these are a little uh, brief about the cs core services you see that uh, most uh, most of them is already used now okay now but uh, what uh, about the architecture i have discussed before for you in the previous sessions if you review but let's uh, a little uh, a review is not bad for in this uh, in this part uh, I told to you we had uh, in the CS core architecture or PS it's not 
dedicated uh, to CS, just to CS, it's general. We had CPCI, we have CPCI, ATCA, Gorotka, and SDN, NFB. Okay, we see that here we have CPCI, and here we have ATCA or Advanced Telecommunication, uh, Telecommunication Computing Architecture. Okay, so but you will see the networking is same hardware you will see uh, very different hardware architecture but networking the same performance of ATCA or ATCA is much better than CPCI ATCA uh, platform enables the software to capitalize on the advanced hardware with multiple cores and multiple CPUs thus improving the system performance without affecting the reliability okay as we can see here, uh, which is the here is the uh, architecture of CPCI and ATCA in ATC in a Huawei uh, device. Okay, we also see here as I told to you ATCA advanced telecommunication computing architecture. You see uh, when you see to these in a history, you will see that it is right that it is uh, this is. The first steps of generating or birth of the SDN NFV. As you see, the whole, the software is going to separate it from the hardware. Okay, so uh, it was I think the from the historical point of view, it was uh, some initial steps toward SDN NFV. Let me uh, let me read it for you. It's a unified platform and it's very very good advantage for this. Uh, and also, industry leading high performance hardware ATCA unified software platform. As I know, in some of these boards, uh, the Linux uh, OS is used. Ensures flexible product combination and unified one M. Unified platform for fixed and mobile network, and for as the, the customer's benefit points of view, high density and large capacity ensure simplified network architecture to adapt business expansion. Uh, yes, the energy consumption is also much more better. So in the uh, many years ago, for example, instead of this just one rack ATCA, uh, we had to have for example, four to five CPCI rack, and, the, and so as a result, the energy consumption also would be four to five times much more. Okay, here we see, for example, it's a flexible. It has a flexible configuration because the hardware is a, in, because the architecture is something that the hardware is separable and from the hardware separated from the hard uh, software separated from the hardware but as you see here this compact and configuration is not suitable for the MNO it's for example when you just uh, dedicated two boards to HSS or some boards for IMS and uh, so on it is uh, it shows us that it is very for a this configuration is uh, dedicated for a, uh, or suitable for a very small MVN. Okay, because MNO, the mm, number of subscribers are much more uh, bigger than the MVN. As you see here, uh, flexible configuration grow as you grow. For example, if at the first you are an operator or MVNO with 30 and 300 k subscribers you can have such a disk configuration and when you grow for example to 20 million wow subscribers you can have something like this so capacity capacity expand by stacking more brand, more boards racks lower down initial cost and hence lower down risks and pay as we grow here we also see the compact scenario but as I told you before the challenge in the right now in the present and then in the, and in the future is SDN NFV we see that in 
many um, uh, parts of the telecom companies IP technologies are migrating to IT for example CTO parts are migrating to CIO this is a very big challenge in telecom companies because uh, every um, region <laughs> wants to uh, keep its area as much as <laughs> as much big as possible uh, but there is no <laughs> there is no uh, way because the services are going to um, implemented on the software software platforms SDN and FB and in, on virtualized platform so many of these uh, the platforms or services that was handled by uh, CTO uh, departments are now migrating to CIO but the challenge in for telecom companies is that um, usually CIO or the people who are involved with servers doesn't uh, didn't have enough knowledge about the telecom and this is the uh, new challenge and the new opportunity uh, which we are facing with that as you see here SDN uh, is focusing on the two layer in this is OSI model open system instruction as you know of OSI have seven layers seven standard layers uh, as you see uh, SDN or software defined network is focused on software softwareization of data link layer 2 and network layer 3 of OSI model but in the other hand NFV is trying to soft, uh, is softwareizing or virtualizing the function of layer 4 to 7 transport session presentation and application okay so because of this that uh, we see that we have uh, some routers based on software for example in a Linux server we have the router or the concept of SD-WAN we also see here the uh, structure of network function virtualization we see that uh, we have a hardware platform here virtual network network storage computation this is a uh, NFB structure infrastructure we have uh, some hardware platforms here but in in above of this infrastructure and in the NFB infrastructure we have some VNF for example it can be VRNC VMSS and something else for example VEPC I didn't told, tell you about EPC but in the future I will tell more about it yeah, NFB is a very big uh, concept but here I, 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 I just give you a big picture from that uh, as you see from uh, reference Amdocs Vodafone uh, is uh, telling that for example the for an average service provider the time it takes to launch a new service is about in the in, before NFV it was about 9 to 18 months 18 months but right now Amazon service launch frequency is uh, 11 seconds in each 11 seconds you can have a new service you see that the speed is really much be uh, better than before and uh, in before um, we had for an av uh, for an average service provider the number of servers per admin was uh, at most 100 servers but now we see that 15,000 number of servers per admin at cloud data centers so you see the difference okay I think uh, for this uh, session is enough in the next session we will go through the uh, CS scenarios and signaling analysis for any question don't hesitate or feel free to contact me this is my email address Paul Hassani at sign gmail.com or this is my uh, website paulhassani.net 
and you can also uh, use this email address Hamid Reza at Wolfsani.com. Okay, hope it would be useful and informative for you, and hope to see you again. Bye.